All right, we're here with Jonathan Flores, world record wingsuit holder. He's about ready to go on an incredible trip to China with the w World Wingsuit League. Is that correct? Yes, sir. For a one-of-a-kind one competition. Thanks for being here with us. Um, Jonathan, can you tell us a little bit about the invite and how you got what that means to you? Well, um, I was in my house uh, after a day of jumping at the drop zone, and I got this cool email saying that I've been one of the 16 athletes selected to participate in the race. Uh, at that point, we were asked not to tell the world what, what was happening and stuff like that because they wanted to contain the news and then launch everybody at the same time. And uh, it was it was kind of a mix uh, a mix emotions. It was pretty awesome to be invited to this event because it's one an event of one of a kind. But it was really intimidated to intimidating to see the other names that were in that list. So. Yeah, it was mixed emotions on that matter. So, um, tell us a little bit about who's on on this list. It looks like some of the world most world respected and renowned wingsuit flyers to date. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, it, for me. It's about my journey, my journey in life, and my journey in the sport. And when I started, I I used to see these guys and hear these names and see all these guys do this amazing stuff, and I never thought I was gonna get to 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 even meet them on here we are I'm about to go to a competition to compete against them against some of the greatest wingsuit pilots you know Julian Bull, James Ball, uh, uh, who else? Tony Uruguayo, Dukes, I know Corliss we have really big guys over there Jokey Somers, the guys from Red Bull I mean you name it it's there you know so what is this uh, invite and this opportunity to get to go to China and actually race and compete against some of the world's best mean to you? It means a lot. It means it, it means um, kind of a gratification or kind of a reward for all the hard work that 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 I've been putting on and all the jumps and all the training that I've been doing. All those times that I've been asking myself, like, why I'm even doing this? You know, I'm spending my money, I'm broke, and what is the reason? And well, finally, Ready, set, it's starting to show go. up that as you develop more and more into the sport, more opportunities start showing in, in your favor, and it's just awesome to be part of, of, of this opportunity. Tell us a little bit about the competition. What is it exactly? Where are you going? You know, what, what makes this particular competition different than anything we've seen so far? Well, the competition is uh, it's pretty awesome. It's a one kind of competition. Uh, the other wingsuit competitions that have been happening in some other places in the world are just like a kind of a straight line kind of competition with a really steep angle, you know, like a 1.5 glide ratio or somewhere around that. So basically you just... You're jumping out of the mountain and then you're just dipping it as much as you can. And in those type of competitions, having weight, like being big, is is, a, is an advantage. So for someone light, skinny, and and ridiculously good looking as me, it's not such a such a, a good advantage. Those races. This one is a race in which you have to jump off the cliff and then you have to turn right. Fly them on uh, uh, on the side of the wall, not too close, but you're flying that side, and then you have to loop around a balloon. You have to do kind of like a 120 degree turn, and then head down the valley. And there's a cable car, and you have to pass in between, and it's time. So there is turns. Uh, the course itself is kind of like a 2.1 glide ratio that is needed in order to to fly. So it's no longer. The chubby guys are in such a good shape because actually you have to fly efficient. So, is is pretty good. We're gonna go over there. We're gonna see different suits perform. We're gonna see different people with different body types perform, and different people with different trainings and backgrounds perform. So, well, I've had I've had the chance to train with you the last couple of weeks, and we've been doing something that I'm not used to doing in wingsuit flying, which is diving. 
to get as much speed as we can and trying to follow you closing in on 150 miles an hour in one of the biggest wingsuits I've ever flown in my life and try to maintain a, a 2.0 aspect ratio. Like I, or a glide slope, I can't like, that just blew me away. Like I did not, would never have thought that a competition like that would come up. Where do you think that comes from? The actual having to dive is just simply speed and do you think you're going to see more of this in, in future competitions? Well, um, these new wingsuits that we're flying, we're flying those wingsuits are pretty efficient, you know, like about 3.2, 3.3 glide ratio. What that, suit What suit are you, are you flying? I'm flying a Tony suit Apache. And what do you think, uh, you know, the bulk of the people will be flying when they're there? I think it's going to be kind of like half and half. I think half people are going to be flying uh, tonic suits, half people are going to be flying uh, Phoenix Fly, and one or two people will be flying another other manufacturer suit. But um, these suits are so efficient that we can allow, allow us the luxury of actually diving them to get 2.0, <laughs> which is funny because in other suits that are not as that are not as efficient, I, you have to actually work in order to get to 2.0. In these suits, we actually have to dive and work to get down there. So we're pretty much changing our our increasing our, uh, our angle of attack, um, increasing the relative uh, wind, and therefore we're creating some massive horizontal speed so we're traveling at pretty fast speeds forward and so what do you think the um skill sets that you've been able to hone just in your your career what what are what's going to benefit you the most what do you think is going to play in for you the most during this competition i i i it's pretty hard to say because if i knew what was the answer i would just be doing that over and over I think it's just a mix of different skill sets that you have acquired during the years. Perhaps, uh, for me, I train so many students that uh, I have to dive out of the sky to chase them and to corral them, so I'm pretty good at diving. I'm also, I fly camera a bunch, do a lot of uh, photography and videography, so I have to get in these weird angles and getting pretty good on following people. Um, base jumps, I've, I I know my exits, um, for the record I was training on high performance flying so I know how to get the suit to max perform so I hope that the mixture of uh, all these different skill sets and all this stuff will play a good role in what I have to do to, to, to make a good role in the race because I mean the bottom line is we're jumping out of a cliff and I can't just dive, I have to fly my wings to, to, to the landing zone and look for clean air, so... How did you, how did you train specifically for this competition and uh, how was it, um, you know, how was your relationship with the other, the other jumpers in the training? Well, it's, it's the relationship with the other jumpers, we're, we're all friends, you know, we're a small community, I, you know the people that are doing this, you you know the names and you know each other in person so the, the this competition has brought something pretty awesome to see was like that the guys that were invited to this are true professionals and the reason being is be because ever since we got started everybody's been training everybody's been doing high speed jumps you know trying to get their horizontal speed pretty good trying to get their glide ratio at what is needed and I, I can see Facebook posts of some of them going like, I went this fast and I did this and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool. I'm, I'm more of the stay quiet kind of guy in this respect. I just want to see what they're doing so I can adjust to that. I won't say what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just part of the strategy. And it's, it's, it's fun because I'll be getting calls from some of the guys like, oh, I'm... I'm I'm getting this in my fly side unit. How can I do this? How can I do that? How can I analyze this? So it's kind of like we, we have turned into kind of like the geeky kind of behind the scenes athlete who just analyzes things and it's pretty awesome. 
Yeah, it's kind of strange going skydiving, and then every time we get down from a jump, we have to check our fly sight data. Like, we don't really know what we did until we look at our fly sight data. Um, and I, and fly sight's a sponsor of yours, right? Yeah. And what, uh, tell me a little bit about fly sight and how it's helped you in the training. Well, fly sight has been an, uh, an enormous fly, uh, an enormous help for me and for so many other wingsuiters out there. Because back in the day, and I said this, back in the day, I'm not 80 years old, but back in the day, like three years ago, four years ago, before we had reliable GPS, we will go with someone, we'll coach them, and we'll be like, hey, dude, yeah, you were doing pretty fine, and you seem pretty fast, and it was all, like, subjective, like, whatever you thought it, it was. Nowadays, when I train a student, they come, we do one jump, and we set up a ground level, and from that, that ground level, we start tweaking their body position, stuff like that, so when we land, we analyze the data, and we go like, hey, look, your glide ratio increased by 40%. Your speed increased by 30 miles per hour. So now it's something substantial. And the reason why I tell you this is because now that I'm training, that's what I'm doing. Every time I'm, I land, I go like, okay, well, the first half of the job, I have my arms in this position and my legs in this position. And I analyze how that, how that translates to my performance. And then I change it on the other half and I can see if that increase or decrease. And if it works for me, I'll keep that what I was doing. And if it don't, if it doesn't, I'll just move on to another thing. So it's a pretty awesome tool for wingsuiting right now to be able to know for sure what 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 if what you're doing is working or not. And you take it for granted that the other competitors are using this as well. I know everybody's using it. I know everybody's using it, uh, but uh, I mean, what's at stake here with the competition? Well, I think that it, it's, it's, I will say this, a stake is your life because we're jumping out of a cliff. And that's my priority number one is to be able to come back home in one piece, no injuries or anything. The other th the stuff that is behind it is the grand prize. There is a $20,000 in stake for the first place. And there is $10,000 for the second place. And there is $5,000 for the third place, uh, which they will come really handy for me because I really, really can use a new car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, that's what is in stake. So everybody has their big boy, big boy pants on, and everybody's just trying to be as professional as they can and taking this as serious as they can. So, what um, what kind of backing do you have of this? What uh, what is your equipment lineup? In you know in in particular, what is your equipment lineup that you're going to be taking with you? Okay, well, uh, my equipment lineup is, first of all, my wingsuit. I'm going to be using my Tony Suit Apache wingsuit. Um, and the reason is because it's a pretty fast suit, and it also allows me to get amazing glides whenever I need it. So if I'm deep in the canyon or something like that, I can pop it and get 3.5s, 3.4s. So that's pretty good. Um, my helmet, I use a Tom Fly helmet, uh, uh, C1. I, I love my helmet. Um, it allows me to plug cameras, to have my GPS, to have everything, and it's pretty comfortable. Uh, it allows me to put my GoPro. Uh, I record everything with GoPro. I believe they're the most versatile and the best action sport camera in the market. So I love it. Uh, flight side, I'm going to be jumping with my flight side unit to measure all my performance and how I'm doing and what I'm, what I'm not doing correctly. And that's my lineup. And all of this is, uh, I would like to take a moment to, to thank uh, my two main sponsors that are called Deportes and Indeportes. Those are two sport agencies from Colombia that promote sports and that have been an enormous help for me during my years in such as non-conventional sport and small sport that's what we do well i know a lot of people ask have asked me in the past and i know that um a lot of people ask this what you know you seem to be going on more and more trips and they seem to be paid for and you're starting to be able to live the dream quote unquote and travel the world and do what you love what is your secret to being able to get these trips paid for so you want the secret okay okay it's uh 
pretty simple. I mean, the secret to be able to do all this is... is... Holy shit, that opening smacked the shit out of me. Wow. Pulling full flight, yeah, that's wonderful.